Hello and welcome to 7 Days. Zach Kusov here with a quick recap of some of the more fascinating stories from the last week. At the top of the show, Russian tennis star Maria Sharapova, the highest paid woman in sports, announced on Monday that she failed a drug test at the Australian Open due to a substance she has been taking for 10 years for health issues. At a press conference, the 28-year-old Sharapova, a five-time Grand Slam champion, announced that she tested positive for meldonium, which is used to treat diabetes and low magnesium, and was only banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency as of the 1st of January. Sharapova said her family doctor had been giving her mildronate, which has also been called meldonium, for 10 years after she frequently became sick had irregular EKG results, a magnesium deficiency, and a family history of diabetes. Sharapova will be provisionally suspended starting the 12th of March, the International Tennis Federation said. In the wake of Sharapova's startling announcement, Swiss watchmaker Tag Heuer said on Tuesday that it was severing ties with Sharapova as the world's highest paid female athlete started to count the cost of a failed drug test and likely banned from tennis. Sports firm Nike and German luxury car maker Porsche also said that they were suspending their relationship with the five-time Grand Slam champion as the 28-year-old Russian awaits a decision on whether she will be banned. The failed drug test at January's Australian Open, one of four annual Grand Slam events, will be costly for her at a time when sports bodies and sponsors are taking a tough line following a series of corruption and doping scandals. Tough news for Maria Sharapova there. Hope she comes out of it because she is a great champion. Okay, coming up next, the Pentagon said on Thursday that it captured the Islamic State's chemical weapons chief in Iraq during an operation back in February. The capture of Suleiman Dawood al Bakr, also known as Abu Dawood, removed the key ISIL leader from the battlefield according to Pentagon spokesman Peter Cook, referring to the militant group by an acronym. Cook said the U.S. military learned details about Islamic State's chemical weapon facilities and production, as well as the people involved from Dawood. The information resulted in several airstrikes by a U.S.-led coalition against Islamic State. Moving along, a crew of more than 100 people was busy at work in setting the stage for a historic concert by the Rolling Stones in Havana, Cuba, set for the 25th of March. The free concert will be a milestone event in the country where the government once banned the group's music as an ideological deviation. The main stage for the show, which is expected to attract half a million people and will be filmed, is set to take place on fields surrounding Havana's Ciudad Deportiva, a 26-hectare or 64-acre sports complex. The gig will mark the first open-air concert in Cuba by a British rock band, according to the group. The concert will mark the first open-air concert in Cuba by a British band, according to the Rolling Stones. Now, structures for displays and audio have already been mounted and crane operators are moving the frame of the 80-meter-long platform for the stage. I'll tell you what, Rolling Stones in Cuba talk about a hot ticket. And finally, BMW marked its 100th anniversary on Monday by unveiling a new self-driving concept car as it seeks to hold on to its title as the world's leading luxury car maker. The futuristic Vision Next 100 includes wing-style doors, a retractable steering wheel, and an interactive windscreen that can warn of hazards even if they are blocked from view. Amazing stuff there. The unveiling of the new concept car comes ahead of a strategy review next week as the audio industry looks for ways to respond to new challenges like Apple and Google. Wow, a self-driving car. Tell you what, that is going to go down great here in KL. What with our famous rush hour traffic. Okay, so until next time, have yourself a great week.